The trial gripping Ottawa. The Mounties say he broke the law. He says he's not guilty. Let the guys get set up here. Suspended no, no, no. Senator Mike I Duffy's now before a judge on 31 charges, fraud, bribery, and breach of trust. What we have to say, we will say in the courtroom, period. After week one, a case built around unclear Senate rules. A former Senate law clerk told the court that even though Duffy only spent 30% of his time in PEI, the province he represented in the Red Chamber, Duffy was allowed to claim expenses for his longtime residence in Ottawa. But there are still key witnesses to come and mounds of evidence to plow through, including Duffy's four-year diary, meticulous daily notes where he refers to himself in the third person as MD. The appointments are light on Senate business and heavy on socializing and Conservative Party fundraising, like these before the 2011 election. Is MD available for events with the PM? MD joins PM on campaign bus. Or this very personal MD explosive. Garlic cabbage rolls? Oh boy. Well, to take us through the first week of the suspended senator's trial and the upcoming weeks, we've assembled our panel of experts. Joining me from Toronto, Gary Clement, who is a former RCMP investigator. And here in studio with me, criminal lawyer Solomon Friedman and pollster Nick Nanos. So, Mr. Friedman, Don Bain is, had a brilliant performance in the courtroom last week. He took the def prosecution's witness, retired uh, Senate clerk Mark Ossent, and ran the table. And he got him to admit that basically there are no rules. The senators can spend money any way they seem fit. Well, it's very interesting. I mean, that's the mark of a great criminal lawyer who can turn the Crown's witnesses, who are there ostensibly to prove the guilt of his client, against them. And he's done that really in a very masterful way this week. We saw, you know, from the very beginning, making it clear, how is it possible that Mike Duffy is eligible to be a senator on one hand, and yet cannot claim PEI as his primary residence? And he, and he put that in such bold legal terms with this witness. It was really a, a sight to see. And he also, which is very unusual, he did an opening defense which is, I gather, does not happen very often, and so why do you think he did that? Well, you have to remember, the defense has no obligation to show its cards, and usually they want to play it pr pretty close to the vest. Here, you know, we know there are really two trials going on. There's a trial in courtroom 33 in Ottawa before Justice Valancourt, but there's also a trial in the court of public opinion, and there's no doubt that Mike Duffy is concerned with both. So by laying out that evidence, what he expects to hear in this trial, he sort of blunts the attack of the Crown, so the people who are observing it know in their mind, whenever hearing, they're hearing potentially damning evidence, there's another explanation. So, Mr. Clement, the Senate rules, very ambiguous, uh, written by senators I, in some ways to, I would assume, to allow a culture of entitlement. But those rules do say that senators are to behave on certain principles, including, quote, integrity, honesty, and transparency, unquote. So how do you get fraud and breach of trust charges to stick if the rules are so vague? Well, uh, it's interesting, but I think if you take a look at it and we go back to the Crown's opening statement, on a, the very basic principle, it's wrong to steal from your employer. And I, I know uh, Mr. Bain has done a, a, a marvelous job of painting this picture, but we're not dealing with somebody that is not uh, familiar uh, with what the workings of, of Parliament Hill. He may not have been uh, fully versed on what happens in the Senate, but to say that he didn't understand right from wrong as far as some of the expenses he was claiming, I think there's still strong evidence to support that. But at the same time, I, I, what it does call into question is I, the Senate definitely needs an overhaul flowing from the ambiguous rules they have. I can't agree with you more on that. No, Nick, um, Mr. Bain is dragging the Prime Minister's name in every chance he can can. I mean, I, I couldn't count the number of times Harper's name was mentioned. He's trying to make the case that Mike Duffy didn't do anything, all these partisan activities, everything he's accused of, without the Prime Minister or the Conservative Party's approval. Oh, you know, exactly. Well, you know, it's been a Civics 101 case, but, you know, the thing is, is that, you know, when we talked about the court of public opinion, the more the Prime Minister is mentioned in the court, the worse it's probably going to be for Stephen Harper and the Conservatives because well, people are making the connections. And it's natural for people to wonder what the role of the Prime Minister was, if anything, what he knew and what he didn't know. 
And what type of direction or lack of direction did he give the senator? And I think from a public opinion research point of view, it's basically a no-win. You know, we're tracking every night, and I can tell you the last few nights for Stephen Harper and the Conservatives have not been pretty when, we're look, when we look at the numbers that are going to come out early next week. So, Mr. Friedman, what uh, Bain is going to do is he's, he's got memos, apparently, from the Prime Minister, who doesn't do emails, but he has memos from the Prime Minister uh, to Duffy, which apparently approves a lot of these activities. Uh, Duffy is going to get on the stand and he's going to say, well, I had a conversation with the Prime Minister uh, and I said I'd prefer to be uh, a senator from Ottawa. I said, oh, don't, because people will raise issues if I live in PI at a cottage. Don't worry about it, Mike. Don't worry about it. So does, is what Bain doing right now to try to get the Prime Minister on the stand at some point? I don't know if that would be necessarily be a helpful strategy. I think what he's doing here is he's undercutting the essential element to every fraud, which is a intention to steal or to deceive in order to gain a benefit. And if they can't prove that beyond a reasonable doubt on a criminal law standard, and remember, Duffy's negligence isn't enough. Duffy's potential stupidity isn't enough. So if you can point to Prime Minister Stephen Harper having signed off on all of these activities, well, that really goes to the heart of what the Crown said. The Crown said, did you defraud your employer? If you did, you're guilty. But he would say, Stephen Harper might not be my employer, but he's certainly the one who appointed me, and I was carrying out activities at his behest, which I fully believed were part of my senatorial duties. So, Mr. Clement, Bain will put Duffy on the stand to testify that the PM and the Senate leadership wanted him to bill the Senate for partisan work and suggested how he could navigate the rules. And apparently he has memos from Harper to Duffy. So what do you do when you're... Uh, how does the Crown deal with that in a court of law? Well, I, I have to actually uh, agree with what was stated previously. This is going to be a real problem for the Crown right now. Um, we haven't seen all the evidence that uh, has been gathered by the RCMP, but quite clearly, uh, if Mr. Bain continues on the path he's on, and he seems to have been quite successful, uh, he can paint that picture that uh, he did it with the approval, uh, and he was basically uh, guided to continue uh, claiming these expenses. Uh, there is no mens rea, and as a result, uh, I think it's going to be hard to uh, convict at the end of the day. So, Nick, the... <laughs> You know, if, if Duffy gets off, that means that Brazo, Patrick Brazo, Mac Harbin, and if Pamela Wallen gets charged, they may all get off for the very same reasons. Won't you think the public be ready to bulldoze or burn down the Senate <laughs> if that happens? Yes, I'm sure Tom Mulcair would want to be at the front of that because he's proposed abolishing the Senate. You know, I think the other shoe to drop on this is after people are angry about this whole Senate controversy and expenses, because we know they're going to be angry, they're probably going to turn their sights on the House of Commons and those expenses and how MPs, you know, what they do in well, terms of their let us, They'll never let uh, the auditor in to do a forensic audit after what's happened with the Senate. For sure, but you know, the thing is, if one of the opposition party leaders decides to be serious about this, then uh, there could be political hate to make. And you know what? The election is a coming, one way or another. There's not going to be a lot of runway for the Tories to recover if they take a hit in this trial. So, uh, finally, Mr. Friedman, um, look, we've got 40 more days to go on this trial. It's too early to make a judgment call here. But on the basis of what we've seen in the first week, uh, do you think there's a really good chance that Duffy may be able to pull it off and get all the charges dropped against them, or at least the more serious ones? Well, I think, you know, we, we say a long trial isn't a sprint, it's a marathon. So Mr. Bain has a, a way to go. But what we're seeing here is meticulously prepared defense counsel who are taking every allegation and blunting it, but not just doing that, actually turn it against the Crown. So you know, I have every faith in Mr. Bain that that's going to continue throughout this trial. and He's going to defend his client in, in this sort of very, very well-prepared manner. But it's, it's an open question as okay, to what Okay, but happens. what about the prosecution? Because it looks, they look like they don't know what they're doing. Well, you know, and I, I couldn't disagree with that more. What we see here is actually sort of the essential crown who is not here to win or lose. We say the crown neither wins nor loses. This is a crown who has a duty to put all relevant evidence before the court, not just the evidence that supports a conviction. I think there's something tremendously honorable about that in the interests of a fair trial, and we're seeing that from, you know, Mr. Holmes, the lead crown who's prosecuting. Well, week two starts tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.